The Moccasin Gobi Story and Pictures by William Roy Brownridge A long time ago, when I was a boy, my family lived on the prairies in a small town called Willow. The winters there were very cold, with the wind blowing the deep snow into huge drifts. My friends and I didn't mind. This was our favorite time of year. Cold temperatures meant ice, and ice meant hockey. I had four best friends. We lived for hockey. Anita had long braids that flew out behind her when she skated. Marshall was big and quiet and good at sports. And then there was the tough little guy we nicknamed Pedo. And finally, there was my dog, Bingo, who always tried to steal the puck. I was the goalie. I had a twisted leg and foot, so I couldn't wear skates. But my leather moccasins were just fine. I was quick and could slide across the goal mouth really fast. They called me Moccasin Danny. Before the really cold weather brought ice to our rink, we played road hockey right on Main Street in front of the red and white store. Pieces of firewood and old overshoes marked our goals. We didn't have street lights, and sometimes after dark we played by the lights spilling from the store windows. Often on stormy days, Mom let us play inside with a softball of sponge rubber. As time went by, we became more and more impatient for the day when we could play real hockey. When winter finally arrived, the rink was the center of attention. The men and big boys began the flooding. We watched as the ice became thick and smooth. Later, our job would be to keep it clear of snow. We spent hours scraping and sweeping so we, so we could drop the puck on beautiful, gleaming ice. Dad said we had hockey on the brain. Mom said she heard me talking about hockey in my sleep. One morning, there was a surprise at the rink. Mr. Matteo gathered us together. We're going to have hockey team. It's called the Wolves, he said. I'll be your coach, and today I choose the team. What, what do you say, boys? We shouted and screamed with glee. This was going to be hockey heaven. Everyone was silent as Mr. Matteo began reading out the names for the new team. Marshall was first to be called. The rest of us anxiously held our breath, and as other names were added, finally Mr. Matteo put down his clipboard. Anita, Pedro, and I couldn't believe it. We were not on the team. Marshall pointed to us and said, They're good players. Mr. Matteo shook his head. Girls don't, don't play hockey, Pate, um, Pedro. Pedro is too small and Danny can't skate. When I got home, I told Mom what had happened. You and Pedro and Anita can still have fun playing together, she said. There will always be games of, of shinny at the rink. This didn't make me feel any better. It's not fair, I said. We're just as good as the rest. Every night was the same. I lay awake, staring at the ceiling, talking to myself. My first chance to wear a uniform and play real hockey, and now it's gone. Every day after school, I watched from my window as the boys went to the rink. Bingo kept looking, looking at me and wagging his tail. He couldn't understand why we didn't we didn't go out to play. Now making the team wasn't the biggest disappointment in my of my life. Weeks later, one snowy Saturday, there was a knock on the, at the door. There stood Mr. Matteo, pointing his finger at me and grinning. "Danny," he said, "we need you to play goal this afternoon. Tony is hurt." The league has given us special permission to let you play on foot. This was a very important game, you know. If we win, we'll be in the playoffs. I was so excited. I let out a whoop and jumped back onto 
bingo's tail. What a racket. But even though I was happy, deep down I was afraid. What if I let the team down? When I go to the rink, all the guys patted me on the back and helped me into Tony's sweater. I was proud, but my heart was pounding. Marshall whispered, don't worry, just play your game and we'll win. As I took my position in goal, I saw Anita, Pedro, and Bingo watching along the boards. You can do it, Danny, they called. The first period was really rough with end-to-end action. They scored on me and my spirits dropped, but then we scored twice. The period ended at 2-1 to one for the Wolves. I had stopped 10 shots out of 11. I could hardly breathe. Then in the second period, we, they attacked at us with all their strength. They stopped 12 shots, but finally a shot went in over my my pads. I felt sick. We were tied to we were tied at two all. I let the team down. The third period was like a bad dream. The shots came at me from all sides. I stopped them with every part of my body. It seemed impossible that we could win. With only two minutes to go, Marshall pushed up the ice, stick handled through their defense and slipped the puck under my my go their goalie at the final whistle we piled on top of each other in great heap we had won the game 3 to 2 mr mateo came into onto the ice and put his arms around marshall and me you two saved the game for us he said danny i want you to stay on the team what do you say I spotted Anita and Pedro waving in the crowd. Suddenly, I knew what I wanted most of all. I looked at Marshall, and he nodded. I pointed to my friends and said, They play the rest of the year with the wolves, t- the wolves too. Mr. Mateo laughed, but he promised. Then he took us all to Shank's Cafe for treats. Our hearts glowed with joy of victory. It was a night we would remember all our lives. The end.